All right, Matt. So today I want to do something a little different. I want to okay. read you a piece that was uh, written by a gentleman by the name of Seth Klarman, who is a mm-hmm. hedge fund manager. He's been in the investing world for a very, very long time. Look forward to this, okay. Um, haven't read this to you yet. You haven't seen it yet. So nope. I just want to hear your raw and honest feedback. And this is going to be uh, oriented around focusing on your process rather than the outcome. And Seth kind of talks about how investors should be more like athletes when they're focusing on process more than the outcome of the sport they're participating in. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to paraphrase this, but he starts off by saying, it's critical that you remind yourself you can only control your process and approach and that you cannot forecast the market. And then you should invest comfortable that you're doing the right thing, even if the short-term outcome isn't what you had hoped, and confident that when the dust settles and the crisis passes, your steadfastness of discipline will have added more value than any other approach. This point about controlling your process is absolutely crucial. James Montier pointed out in a recent piece that when athletes were asked what went through their minds just before competing in the Beijing Olympics, the response again and again was that the competitor focused on the process and not the outcome. That way to maximize outcome is to concentrate on process. Montier points out that psychologists have long been aware of a phenomenon known as outcome bias. This is the tendency to judge a decision differently based on its outcome. For example, a doctor performs an operation and the patient survives, the decision is rated as significantly better than if the same operation fails and the patient dies. According to Montier, during periods of poor performance, the pressure builds to change your process. But Mm. so long as the process is sound, this will be exactly the wrong thing to do. When one's time orientation becomes absurdly short term, Mm. the process is compromised. Investing is hard enough. It is crucial to have a sound process that will enable you to perform this difficult task with intellectual honesty, rigor, creativity, and integrity. Wow. Your thoughts. There's a lot there. A lot to unpack. A lot to break down. A lot to unpack. So my first response is any sort of style of investment is going to come in and out of favor with the market. And I think one of the toughest things for investors is to embrace or trust that process, right? And we are always going to have excuses, some louder than others, depending upon what's going on around the world, of reasons not to invest. And if risk assets didn't have downside risk, we wouldn't have the upside potential of what long-term, say, stock investors have averaged. And so I love the focus on the process. I guess I look at it through the lens of how the client reacts to this. And sometimes clients are looking for certain type of action to happen when sometimes no action is the right decision. Or buying when everyone else is selling. When you think longer term, we talked about that short term time horizon. You know, sometimes, you know, you got to think long term and not worry about what the market's going to do next week. Yeah, and I think the the, one of the most easy examples that we can talk about here is the average, quote unquote, average return for the S and P five hundred over the past fifty years. Yeah, yeah, right. Depending on where you start, to average anywhere between seven and nine ish percent, right? Yep, annualized per year. Very few times does the market actually finish the year in that, or even between five to twelve percent. Very few times, right? So when you're you know trying to calculate or forecast how much you're going to have in your investment account or retirement accounts by the time you're 65, 70, 75, yes. it's important to note that it's not going to be 7 to 9% every single year. Sometimes you're going to be up 30%, sometimes you're going to be down 10% on a year-over-year basis. Um, but again, when we zoom out and focus on the long term, then those large uh, yep. swings in market performance tend to average out. Here's the last bit of piece of wisdom, and I love that you shared this this week. It is human nature, I feel, for clients to always remember what their investment portfolio's high watermark was. 
and clients will assimilate, well, I am this far off that high water mark. I've lost this much. What the client tends to forget is if he or she was not taking risk to begin with, their portfolio would have never reached that point to begin with. Mm -hmm. And when we look back through different times, hindsight's twenty twenty. it's easy at times to forget that we have to endure years like 2022, the market volatility the last three months. So when we take a step back and we look at the last five years, 10 years, to be able to enjoy those rates of return. And so I love his focus and kind of the perspective of, you know, trusting that process. Because I think, first of all, you do an excellent job as our firm's chief investment officer, utilizing a very disciplined investment process. And there's going to be times where, say the last three months, even despite that process, accounts might be down during that time period. But I think as you kind of embrace that process over a normal market cycle, that's where I feel clients will get rewarded for taking that risk. Right. Good way of saying it? Yeah, great way of saying it. So I uh, couldn't have said it better myself. So thanks, Matt, for your Thank input you. and kind of, uh, you know, hitting you with one that you haven't seen. Yeah, before. I love it. It was fun. Um, Let's do more of this. Hopefully some people got uh, some out of that. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. But we will be back with you on another episode of Questions with Matt and Mark next week. See you then.